Ron McGill here with part three of our special edition of Zookatomy on Dinosaurs Live. Here's a glimpse of what you'll see coming back to life in limited time here at Zookatomy. Stegosaurus was a large, slow-moving plant eater. At Zoo Miami, it's located next to the lion exhibit, and one can often hear the lions in the background, calling out to proclaim their territory. The name Stegosaurus means roof lizard, and was given to this dinosaur because of the large armored plates along its back. Though scientists are not sure of the purpose of those plates, the large spikes at the end of the tail were most likely used for defense. This herbivore occurred during the Jurassic period. It was found in North America, reaching a height of 10 feet with a total length of 30 feet and weighing close to 10,000 pounds. Pachycephalosaurus is distinguished by its high, dome-like skull formed by a thick mass of solid bone growth over its tiny brain. In addition, it has a series of bony knobs and spikes at the sides of the skull that further add to its unusual appearance. One theory suggests that this massive head and thick skull served as a battering ram in competitions with others of its kind for territory or mates, or as a defense mechanism against potential predators, much like the large antelopes and rams of today. Apatosaurus is often confused with the similar looking Brontosaurus. Though not as large as the Brontosaurus, it was still rather impressive, reaching a height of 15 feet with an overall length of 90 feet and weighing over 60,000 pounds. Though very large and impressive, this was believed to be a passive herbivore that posed little threat to any other dinosaurs. Much like the modern day giraffe, the extremely long neck of this dinosaur enabled it to reach vegetation that was out of reach of other herbivores, thereby reducing competition for food. The Apatosaurus occurred in North America during the Jurassic period. Diabolosaurus was a medium-sized grazing herbivore. The Diablo in the dinosaur's name comes from the Latin word for devil, which is a reference to the large pair of upward and sideways curving horns on the back of its frill. Paleontologists believe that its frill may have changed color during the mating season, much like modern-day chameleons. It was covered with thick skin that had many bony protrusions that likely served as a form of armor to defend against attacks from predators. This dinosaur occurred during the Cretaceous period in North America and reached a length of 18 feet while weighing up to 3,000 pounds. Hey, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about these amazing animals that roamed the earth millions of years ago. I look forward to seeing you on the final edition of the Dinosaurs Live on Zookatomy next time. Hi, Ron McGill with some more questions and answers on Zookatomy. So today our first question comes from Mary. She says, we have a lake behind our house and often see brown pelicans. Then we don't see them for a long time. She asked, do pelicans have a seasonal migration or are they in South Florida all year long? Well, Mary, they are in South Florida all year long, but they sometimes migrate from area to area in South Florida, depending on the abundance of fish. As bait fish are coming down along the coastline, many pelicans that are inland will go out there looking for the bait fish. If fish are starting to turn up in a certain lake, like right behind your house and they find it, they'll go there and feed on the fish there. So basically the pelicans go within South Florida where the fish are. They're drawn by the food and fish migrations differ, bait fish differ depending on temperatures, depending on tides, and that's what causes the pelicans to go from one body of water to another body of water. So they are year-long residents here in South Florida, but they go from different bodies of water uh, looking for different fish that may be mo moving in and out at different times. All right, our next question is, Sophia asks, can we find any animals in our backyards that are at the zoo? Absolutely you can, Sophia. If you come here, for instance, to our Florida Mission Everglades exhibit, you're gonna see animals that you may see in your backyard. One of them, for instance, is the gray fox. We have gray foxes all over South Florida here. Though we don't see them often because they're fairly shy, they do exist. So if you come to the zoo, you see our gray fox, you may see it in your backyard. You may see a raccoon in your backyard that you'll also see in our Florida Mission Everglades exhibit. You may even see a bald eagle flying over your house, which would be really cool, but very possible because they're here in Florida. So yes, there are animals here at the zoo that you can see in your backyard. All right, next we have Liam who asks, how many pounds of meat does a lion need per day? That's a complicated question, Liam, because 
Under human care, we feed our lions every day, except for one, they get a fast day where they get some bones to keep their teeth healthy and such. And here at the zoo, like I said, they, the big males get a little over seven pounds of meat every day, but that's not how they eat in the wild. In the wild, a lion may go for several days without eating anything at all. But when they make a kill, a big male lion can eat 10 times what it would eat on a daily basis here uh, in human care at the zoo. You know, we have big lions in the wild that can eat well over 50 pounds in one sitting, but then they won't eat again for several days. I've seen lions hunt and eat so much food, their bellies get huge, and then they lay on their backs for days trying to digest all that food. So the short answer is, on a daily basis, a big male gets about seven to eight pounds every day, but in the wild, they'll have sometimes up to 70 pounds in one day and then nothing again for several days. All right, then he asks also, how much does a rhino weigh? Well, it depends on what species of rhino. You know, there are several species. You have the Javan rhino, you have the black rhino, you have the white rhino, you have the greater one-horned rhino. So you may have something like a black rhino that may be about two to 3,000 pounds, maybe 2,000 pounds. And you might have something like the greater one-horned rhino that can get to be over 4,000 pounds. So they range in size, about 1,500 to maybe 4,000, 4,500 pounds. All right, finally, we have Nico who asks, why did pythons used to have legs? You know, a lot of people are curious about that when I tell them that these vestigial legs that you see on pythons are what they used to have bigger legs. And people say, well, why, why would you evolve to lose your legs? Well, because when they had legs, they started going after prey that may have been underground through burrows. They may have gone through very thick grass, very thick brush, where those legs would get in the way as they tried to get through those areas to find their prey. As the legs got smaller, they were able to slither through a lot easier, and they're able to find their prey and catch their prey a lot easier that way. So, Contrary to popular belief, snakes are not older than lizards. They're actually more modern than lizards on the evolution scale. They evolved to lose those legs to make it easier for them to get into the areas where they can find the prey that they feed on. I hope I was able to answer those questions. I look forward to hearing more questions in future episodes of Zoo Academy.